off-road guy here and today it's not going to be an installation video but I'm just going to show you around uh, the air systems on my two trucks. See I, after Christmas I took the power wagon out four-wheeling and well didn't do quite as well as I'd have liked but it was kind of handicapped due to the fact that the power wagon does not have onboard air yet and so I it really I did more winching on that four-wheeling trip than I've done in any other all the rest of them put together this this truck and the, the Blazer and the Dodge both have winches that frankly have not been used very much because I have a you know you're able to air down and get able to lower your ground pressure and it really helps and also for air tools and such so I ordered up an air an air compressor for my wife's power wagon. It was her birthday, and she's been wanting an air compressor on a truck. I know, weird, a woman wanting an air compressor, but I ordered it up for her, and she doesn't know yet, but it should be coming here, and hopefully in the next next hour or so it should show up. Um, I figured I'd go over the two air systems I got on the other two I have, and I'm going to start off with the Blazer since it has the most sim the simplest air system in in a way because it's an engine driven compressor that's in a way it's a lot simpler because well the, the blazers air system well, is only for airing up tires and using impacts and such so whereas the dodge uses the air for the dodge over there it uses air for the airbags and the air lockers I'm gonna start at the beginning of the system and just baby basically give you an overview of each one so for the blazer I got a, just a switch underneath the seat here that takes and activates the air compressor from the cab I used a pressure a pressure switch off of basically the same same thing you use on a house compressor you see it looks exactly the same off like a house compressor I have that there is a relay in there, so for you taking power up the relay, and that and that runs. Bat I got battery power going to the switch, and in also in here there is a one-way check valve, and I'm using a York air compressor, which York is made by Borg Warner, I believe. This particular compressor, you can get them off of. They're usually come on older vehicles, like from the 70s or so. Like I know they were popular Dodge vans and Dodge vehicles used them a lot. This actually particular one I, I pulled off a junkyard and they pulled it off a Volvo. Like a Volvo station wagon. Because if you take a look up there's a little ID plate you see here. They actually have different cubic inch. Um, where you know they're basically just a piston compressor. So you can get different um, cubic inch one versions. And I wanted one of the higher cubic inch compressors if I was going to be doing this and I bought the adapters here the bolt-on which here's the intake air <clears throat> I had a one of these this is braided stainless steel which is able to take higher temperatures because I don't know how much temper how much but usually when you compress air the compression side creates heat by compressing it you're creating heat in the system so you have to get a hose that is able to take the temperature, the higher heat temperatures that you might see. And then later on, because with the York air compressor, I did the modification to the oil in port where you take and drill, drill tap and block off a port. If you go online, you can see all the details on how to turn one of these York air compressors, at least a junkyard version, <coughs> into uh, something you can compress air with instead of uh, using it for AC and so because of the, the in the oiling system it does put out a bit of you know oil because you take and basically fill it with engine oil so I took and added a uh, let's see, basically a water separator but I'm using it more for an oil separator and because try to cut down on the amount of oil in the system and I just welded up some brackets, took out my AC in this, and put this in place of the AC. And here's the air tank that I 
I went to a junkyard and a big rig junkyard and bought an air tank off it for like 35 bucks and installed it basically on the underneath the blazer if you think where the rear passenger seat is it's basically underneath the seat and then I ran air fittings to the front and rear bumper on opposite sides and ultimately this was a cheaper uh, more high performance setup than the one I've gotten the uh, the Dodge. I mean, this one, if you take and, re and re have somebody revving the engine up to about you know two grand, you can take and uh, almost run an air a cutoff wheel without having to pause much. I mean, if you ever I don't I know if you ever used an undersized compressor, you you know that taking and having to pause to let the air build up a little more is something common while on these onboard air systems you kind of have to work with them if you want to use air tools like you know an impact you probably go through and remove your lug nuts because you're only hitting it and you know where it's fairly quick <clears throat> but this will run an impact and in the cutoff wheel and I got I got one in the truck I keep so that's the air system on the blazer which is essentially really simple and does a really good job and it's I put it together for fairly cheap it's back when I didn't have as much money and I was able to build it for pretty cheap so. alright now on the Dodge it's a lot more complicated of a system because I actually have things I use on here that require you know air you know like the air lockers I got you see over there the switches for the front and rear axle lock switches I got the comp one compressor switch here which I have two compressor switches one this one's for the uh, if I need to use like the air lockers so I, I when I'm in the seat I, and also I get, ended up installing an air pressure gauge because for the air lockers you need a certain amount of pressure before you can start locking them up you can't just you can't just let it hit the switch and hit the lockers. You may damage them. I, I think it said uh, you need 20 or 40 psi somewhere in there, so I make sure it gets up to about 50 psi before I activate the lockers at all, which they don't require a whole lot of air to activate, but <clears throat> they require the a certain amount so you don't to fully activate. And then down here, I've put another gauge and an on and off switch which I also have next to my airbag this thing for the gauge for the airbags on this truck and first of all this this truck started out with a because when I bought it it had airbags on it it, it started out with a little Firestone air compressor that was just good enough for the airbags and I wanted an air compressor system that was able to run to minimum air up my tires up and down but I was wanting one a lot that would run air tools so I decided to buy a V air system so I installed that it came with a it was a whole kit it came with came with the tank and it was a dual compressor setup I bought brackets in a minute I'll crawl under and show you a lot of this but once I initially got it installed in the whole truck, it it wouldn't do air tools. It claimed to do air tools, but it wouldn't even. You'd put the impact on it. It would take and you would hear the impact hit about once or twice, and then it just you know petered out after that because it wasn't putting out enough air enough CFM. So because that annoyed me and I wanted to be able to uh, do air tools. I ended up adding, there's an ARB air compressor, I forget the model, but it, it's basically a, a dual compressor setup. In fact, uh, if you watch the video after this one, because I'm going to be installing the same exact ARB air compressor in the power wagon, if you watch the next one, you'll see the exact, I'll, I'll be able to show you the model and such in that, that video, because I forget it. It's, but uh, I'll show you it up close in the next video. 
that compressor. It's the same one that I'm, I already have on this truck, which is supposed to put out quite a bit of CFM, quite a bit more than the, the V-Air system I put on. So I'm going to crawl under. I'll show you the... Because also, I, the, there's two reasons why I'm doing this. Because I'm going to be installing an air compressor on the power wagon. And then also I've had people ask me how I mounted the air compressor on, on this truck. Because um, it was for the uh, air locker video I did. Of me installing the air lockers in the front. I believe it was the front. Then somebody asked me where I mounted them. I gave them a long explanation. But here they can actually see what I did to mount them. Because even if it's going to be a little rougher because they're both the compressors are pretty close to each other but so let me call under and I'll show you the air compressor setup even all right all right so I'm to so you understand where this is on my truck I am basically laying on my back and staring and fate right now the camera is facing straight up towards like the ceiling and you can see the bottom of the brackets here these brackets didn't come with the with the V-Air system and I've basically bolted them together on each side so that they sandwich this uh, this this uh, frame part right here for the bed that was the first setup I did was the V-Air which you can see the two compressors and right there you're looking at the bottom of the bed right here is the bed and you can kind of see oh it's tight because right here is the the start of the cab I would think there'd be more uh, more room between the cab and the bed but I guess they blocked it off so because right here is the gap between the bed and the cab this is this rubber piece so if you can picture that and right here is a piece of the frame for the, the bolt to the bottom of the bed so and we're on the passenger side of the truck so that's the V-Air setup those two compressors alright for the ARB setup you can see this metal plate I took and bolted to the bottom of the bed. There's a frame rail on the bed right there. That's the very front frame rail on the bed. And then, and there's the very next frame rail back, which it's about hmm, probably somewhere between a foot and foot and a half. And I know it's hard to see because of all the stuff that's jammed in this little area. But if you look through the wires and the hoses you can see the ARB I mounted the ARB air compressor basically facing downward under on the bottom of the bed I took and mounted that plate metal plate and then I took and drilled holes in it before mounting it air tank from the V air setup which is about two gallons and you can see the valves right here for the air lockers and all the hoses and such and all right so up top here next to the battery I have the two air intakes you can see one right there on top and there's one see the other down there deep you see the brass fittings down a little deeper those are for the two and so basically this setup has four air compressors. They're just little. So you figure the ARB has. And then I took and drilled holes in the bumper for the air fittings. Put uh, bulkhead fittings for on each, the front and back of the truck. So each one's a little different. This one definitely cost me a lot more than this for this truck electric whereas the other one the engine driven one is a lot better more high performance and it's cheaper since I, you're able to get a lot of the parts at the junkyard you figure the compressor I think I paid 40 bucks for 40 or 50 bucks for well this was back <laughs> this was back in the 
I've had that on the blazer for about 15 years so this was 15 years ago I think things even now things are going up fast so and I paid 35 bucks for the air tank like 40 bucks for the compressor and then you figure with all the fittings so I probably got somewhere about two or three hundred bucks into the compressor setup on the blazer and that compressor is it puts out a lot of air and it, you easily if you rev it up it, I mean be able to run a die grinder is pretty impressive in my opinion at least I mean if you're just letting it on idle you'll have to stop let it charge the can tank up and then do use it for you know a few seconds and do that but if you have somebody revving it it does a lot a lot better whereas this one's just on or off the advantage to this one is like the with well, that compressor it's not as clean of air and if you don't plug off that port and get an oil separator you get dirty air which for air if you're strictly using it for air tools that's good but you're airing up air and tires up and down I wouldn't want to be put, putting that oily air into the tires you might break them down faster so Whereas this is the, the Dodge has that those these electric ones are super that air is clean. They don't you don't have to worry about oil or nothing. I don't have any. Those are two different types, and then I'll be installing that ARB. I'll show you that in the next video on the power wagon, and we'll see what kind of performance we get out of that in the end. Alright. Follow me on YouTube and Facebook. Like and comment on the videos. Thanks. Bye.